Aloha, my name is Sunny Savage and I am here to show you the safest way that we know as of now to eat haulikoa. Haulikoa is the name that we use uh, here in Hawaii for this shrub or small tree, but it is scientifically known as Lucana leucocephala. And of course, there's so many names around the world for this, this plant. Um, so I'm going to focus on eating the brown seeds in this video. And so in order to do that, you're going to want to um, make sure that the pods are free and clear of any mold. You can visually see that once you open these up. Sometimes you can visually see molds. So you really want to stay away from any mold. And then you're also going to want to make sure you're looking out for any insect damage. Um, so oftentimes you can see in the pods themselves tiny little holes and then sometimes they're not so visible and you open it up and you see the insects and you just remove them. It's not a big deal. They're not going to jump out and bite you, but you know, we're going to want to really have a nice clean um, food source. So uh, when I'm harvesting haulikoa, I always bring a bucket with a sealing lid and it's just so important to do that. If you don't have a bucket with a sealing lid, bring a bag that has like a, a zip top to it or some type of way that you can totally enclose it and transport it safely without spilling any of those seeds because they are viable for like 60 years or more. I mean, who knows? A very, very long time. And this is a highly invasive plant, so we don't want to be spreading it. So in order to do this, they'll, they'll come off really, really easily. So I want to put the bucket right underneath when I grab them. And it's just as easy as this. <laughs> All right, so we'll bring them in the kitchen and process them up. So you will develop an eye on which beans to harvest. In the beginning, you might want to just pull all of the brown ones that you see, but you're going to keep an eye out, like I said, for the mold and any insect damage. You'll start to notice any small little holes in the pods. When you open these up, the seeds are actually quite small. Now, after they have soaked in water, which is the way that I'm showing you here how to process them, they will swell. They're about a third of the size when they're dry. So these ones all look good. There's no small little insect hole damage. They don't look visibly moldy. These are beautiful little haulikoa seeds. So haulikoa has a mild toxin called mimosine in it. And in order to remove mimosine, we're going to want to um, soak the seeds for 36 hours in water. The addition of a heat treatment or fermentation also helps remove mimosine. Um, it's also thought that using cast iron pans can help chelate out some of the mimosine. But really just remember that you're fine, most people are fine eating up to 10% of the diet in untreated haulikoa. So if you're eating more than 10% or you just want to take that extra precaution, you are going to use the 36 hour soak. Now these particular seeds have been soaking for 24 hours and it is time to change the water. With all parts of Halikoa, you typically want to change the water once or twice to kind of uh, remove any off-putting uh, fermenty kind of things. Um, with the brown seeds also, I'll oftentimes notice ones that rise up to the top um, and those ones I will typically throw away, sift out and throw away. So I'm going to strain these off. All right, so I just wanted to point out that you'll see that some of these seeds are really plump and swollen, and these are the ones that you want to eat. If you have um, any variability, like these ones are going to be hard and no good. Now, in all honesty, I actually harvested at two different times, and so I'm going to give these a longer soak until they all plump up and swell, but really 
look through because if you have any that are flat or don't swell, they're going to be hard and you don't want to eat those and you know, risk cracking a tooth or something. So I go ahead, put these in, fill with water, and I'm going to let them soak for another, you know, roughly 12 hours or however long it takes. Um, I will put the, like a clean hand towel on top and put them somewhere out of the way in my kitchen. And when it's time for their final rinse, I really make sure and give them a nice rinse to just wash away anything that needs to be washed away, you know, kind of manipulate them with your hands, give them a solid rinse, and then they're ready to put in whatever delicious creation you are going to prepare.